So I've never been one to really look back on movies that I've given poor reviews for, mainly because I'm fairly definitive with my first viewing, especially within the last nine years or so. Those are, are the times now where I can be very definitive with a film. Admittedly, I have been re-watching a bunch of older films from my youth, and sometimes I have had different opinions of them. I've had higher opinions of some films. I've had lesser opinions of other films. But one in particular that came up at least from the comments section for this video all the time was my review of Lake Mungo. It has a cool idea, but I will never watch this again and I'm probably gonna forget about it. Now, do I sound like a fucking douche at a few points in this video? Constantly kept getting distracted by just wanting to look at my phone. There are some things that maybe I should have done it again, but I did have a very definitive feeling about this film and I thought it was boring, but I did have reasons as to why. Uh-oh, here comes Mungo! So I felt like I had good justification. I liked the ideas that the film were trying, but I feel that they weren't executed. And this time around, I could really nail down exactly why that was. The writing wasn't the issue. The cinematography actually wasn't the issue either. Thankfully, I was able to watch it on a higher quality version this time, so the cinematography was a little bit more appreciated, especially with the empty shots of the house. Zoom in things on the photos, though, kind of became a little bit obvious to see that the distortion, like, like movies being made for nothing money, but it was easier to point it out on this higher quality. Funnily enough, because the low quality was the reason why I didn't like it when I watched it the first time. It's the acting. After a first bit, you think it's actually okay, but then you realize that everyone is actually doing the exact same thing. Stone cold chin looking in one direction, never variating, and constantly over gulping. There's maybe two or three instances of changed action, but aside from that, that is it. They never really variate. They are all the same person, and I think that's what bothered me so much when I watched it the last time. I don't really have a position on them at all. I don't really want them to come around to dinner, mind you, but you know, I didn't want to upset June either. Especially the dad. There's some acting bits in this film that are just so... The two parents who were interviewed quite heavily in this are very dry or wooden at times. It's hard to take it seriously, especially when we're holding on them for so long. But then the slow buildup with the photos and kind of the omission about how awful grief is. It was very strange spending Christmas Day with the family up there while Alice lay alone in the morgue. About how you go to a lake one day with your daughter, your family member, your sister, your brother, or your mom, your dad, and then imagine going home without one of them in the car on the way home. Just that quickness. And I get where people are coming from in terms of the horror aspect because it's talking about the very, very clear realities of death and how we will have to eventually deal with them. But I think that doesn't make it a horror movie in the sense of what I call traditional horror. Traditional horror to me is I feel scared watching the movie. It's not I'm going to be scared later on. That can also be incorporated into the same kind of horror movie that I said, vice versa. But they have to tread a line, I feel. They have to make me spooked at least one point. I'm not talking about doing jump scares and stuff, just genuine terror, genuine fear. The funny thing is, the real reason why I actually rewatched this is that I got to work on a Mike Flanagan project, a couple of them. One, The Midnight Club, the other one's gonna be announced soon. This guy is one of my favorite directors and writers in horror and television and drama, not just because he writes good horror stories, he writes good stories that have horror in them, I feel. He loved this movie. And I was like, how? How does he love this movie? So I finally, finally, after putting that seed in my head, I rewatched it. And I can get where people are coming from there. And Flanagan reflects that a lot in his work. A lot of his recent Netflix material has dealt with death and grief and how families, communities, people, kids, young kids deal with death when it is in their face, almost. And it is a part of what they are becoming. And it's something that they've been running from. It's something that they have to deal with. It's something that they are afraid to deal with. And that is why I think people like this movie, because it does talk about that. 
but I just feel it's a bit wooden sometimes. I am admittedly not sober right now, so that also might have helped me interpret this a little bit differently. But I also can see why sober me was bored. I was having to like to chew gum to keep myself away <laughs> while it was going. I, I, I get it. I get why people are interested in it, but holy shit, is it, it does take its time. Would I give Plague Mungo a different rating? Okay, it's not entirely as bad because not only is the cinematography very good, but also the music is very good. Whoever the composer was of this film did a great job. Helped elevate a lot of the bad acting. Like if a lot of those scenes didn't have music over them, ooh, the effect that I feel would have been 20 times worse. But that music, this can be almost be attributed to a very, very, very early version of uh, dramatic dark music over TikTok or YouTube short. Wow, I am very surprised I made that comparison. Anyways, guys, what do you think of Lake Mungo? Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Anyways, that's all for me. I'll see you guys next time.